Hi, welcome back, you guys. Um, we're gonna go ahead and say a prayer. We're gonna we're gonna start reading. Father, we thank you for this evening again to read your word. We pray that we will read your word with with uh, intention and with purpose, so that we can hide the word in our heart and not sin against you. We ask him for your divine wisdom, understanding, and knowledge of your word. And we just take this time out to thank you for how you kept us today, you provided for us today, you healed us, you counseled us, and you protected us, God, us and our families and those that we love. And um, so we thank you for that. And we, we pray, God, that you will bless the um, hearer and the doer of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we finished up on Matthew 22 last week where Jesus asked the Pharisees who is the Messiah's son. They said the son of David, and he told them that, how is that so? Um, when the son of David said to my Lord, um, well, he said, well, why is the son of David pretty much calling um, his son, my Lord. How is it then that David speaking by the spirit calls him Lord? For he says, the Lord said to my Lord, right? And how Jesus is saying, how can he be his son when he's calling him Lord? And they couldn't, they couldn't refute that, you know? Um, and, and basically what it, what Jesus is saying is that, you know, he, yes, yes, he is the son of David, but he is also the, the son of God. He, he is, he has a dual nature. Um, but okay, we're, 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 we're moving on. Then that was then we know who he is now. All right, so Matthew 23, uh, we're going to be reading verse 1 through 12, and let's see, verse 1 says, Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, so you must be careful to do everything they tell you but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. So he was telling them it was okay to do what they do, what they tell you, because they were teaching from the Mosaic law, the Mo, the law of Moses. However, he said, do not do what they do, because they're not practicing what they preach. Um, he said, they tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries wide and their tassels on their garments long. And I was looking up the word phylacteries and it says a phylactery are small black cube shaped leather cases that contain Torah's T-O-R-A-H text written on parchment. They are worn by male Jews who are 13 uh, years of age and older as a reminder of Deuteronomy and Exodus, their interpretation of the Lord's command to bind his words on their hands and between their eyes was to copy the word on small scrolls and place them in leather cases. So they took the word literal here literally rather all right and so um jesus is saying that everything they do they do they everything they do is done for people to see they make their phylacteries wide and the tassels of other gar of their garments long uh, they love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues they love to be greeted, Jesus is saying, with respect in marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. But Jesus is saying to um, us, to his, well, he was talking to 
the people then, um, any, anyone that I guess disciples and others, I guess that claimed to that that had followed him, that became his followers, he said, "Well, you are not to be called a rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers." And well, he says all brothers, so I don't know if he's talking to the disciples or if he's talking to the crowd. Um, and do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be the will be your servant. Listen, the greatest among you will be your servant. We don't find that a lot of in church. That I heard of and unseen. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Um, now, in context, Jesus acknowledges that the Pharisees and scribes have a legitimate role of authority in teaching the law. They sit in Moses' seat. He advises the people to follow their teaching as they are based on the law. However, he cautions against following their example because they do not practice what they preach. And this pretty much points out the importance of integrity and consistency between one's words and deeds or one's words and their actions. Jesus condemns the religious leaders for imposing burdensome rules on others while they themselves avoid the same obligation. This reflects their lack of compassion and the legalistic nature of their teaching. Now, he also criticizes their desire for public recognition and honor as seen in their love for visible symbols like the, the phylacteries and the long tassels and their preference for the best seats and respectful greetings like, you know, calling them rabbi and such. Their actions are driven by a desire for human approval, oh my gosh, rather than the genuine devotion to God. And Jesus advises his followers, his followers against seeking titles like rabbi, father, or instructor in a way that elevates them above others. I don't believe personally he wouldn't want you to call your, your father, your dad, father. I don't know. I don't know if that's, I don't think that's what it means, but during this time, they had titles in, on their name to, to, to be seen as, I guess, m more important than others, you know? And I mean, that's, that's kind of like it is today, you know? But um, Jesus is speaking against that. He's speaking against that because that, back then it's like that elevated them above other people. But these titles imply authority, but Jesus emphasizes that all believers are equal with God as their father and Christ as our ultimate savior, our ultimate teacher. He's our teacher. The core of Jesus' teaching here is humility. True greatness in the kingdom of God is found in serving others, not in seeking to be exalted. This summed up that verse where Jesus declares, Jesus declares that those who exalt themselves will be humbled while those who humble themselves will be exalted. Hmm. Let God let God exalt you. Let him exalt you. Don't you exalt yourself. Because you don't want him to humble you. If, if, if he must, he must. But, you know, do inventory on your own lives. Now, in this passage, Jesus, Jesus warns the crowds and his disciples about the hypocrisy of the Pharisees and scribes. So he was talking to the crowds and the disciples. He acknowledges their authority to teach the law, but criticizes them, talking about the Pharisees now, but criticizes them um, for not practicing what they preach. They burden others with strict rules while seeking public recognition and horror, I'm sorry, honor on or for themselves. Jesus teaches that his followers should avoid teaching titles that elevate them above others and should instead focus on humility and service. He concludes by stating that those who humble themselves will be exalted, while those who exalt themselves will be humble. Once again, humble yourself, humble yourself. 
All right. Thank you all for listening. Um, I pray for you all um, or for those who, who are seeking um, truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. Truth is a person. That's Jesus. He said, I am the truth, um, the way and the life. No man comes to him except through, no man comes to the Father except through him. Um, Romans 10 and 9 says, if you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. If you want to be saved. Um, he loves you. He died for you. Hell was not created for you. All right. God bless. God bless. Y'all have a good night. And thanks again. Bye for now.